Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 1, Lesson 4. We are talking about making the moves. And so today we're going to be drawing and describing translations, rotations, and reflections. Those are three terms we've talked about before in this school year already. And so you did a little review, first of all, with your teacher. She probably, he or she probably flashed up a little image there of a triangle. And then you were supposed to make a copy of that triangle from what you saw, what you could recall. And if I'm not mistaken, maybe you saw something like they threw up a point, B prime. You went, okay, I got that one. And then maybe there was another point and it was uh, A prime. And you were like, well, I think it was somewhere over here. And so you were, you were just jotting down what you thought you saw, which was just fine. And so you saw an A prime and you went, oh, I see a D prime. And so you were flashing those things there and then you connected your dots and you made your little sketch and you notice that, oh, this was gonna be an image that was reflected across a line of reflection here. And so you're able to figure those things out. But the point is you're looking at translations. So some kind of slide, maybe moving something left or right or up or down, a translation there. Perhaps a rotation where a shape spins and rotates around a point B, either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on what they say. Or perhaps even a reflection where it flips over that line and you have the reverse image there over there. The point was though, that as a tra the transformation, what a transformation does, the transformation takes a shape to a new place. It's actually making this shape do something and become something different and be in a different location. So a transformation takes a shape to a new place, whether that be through a translation, a rotation, or a reflection. I know you spent some time with your partners then and they gave you some triangles and you took some triangle work and they said, well, okay, we're gonna take this triangle and we want you to do some different things with it. And perhaps they asked you to do something like translate it down three steps. So you went one, two, three. Then they might've said, rotate it around point C and maybe they said rotate it, I don't know, 90 degrees. You went, well, I'm not sure what 90 degrees is. So you went and you figured that out. So, okay, it's gonna be something like this and you rotate 90 degrees. Maybe then you had to reflect that across a line over here, I don't know, and you reflected it. And so you played with some different shapes to see that there are lots of ways you can take a shape and move it through translations, through rotations, and through reflections to produce different images as those transformations take a shape from place to place. And so when you look down below here at this last part of four, three, the sample there, you had some trapezoids and you were seeing them make some moves from A to B to C. And you were gonna talk about, well, how does it get from one place to the next? I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight mine a little bit so you can see them a little more clearly. So we have A, we have B, and then down here we have C. And so when you look at these images, to go from A to B doesn't take much. We're just simply sliding this whole thing over and that looks like a simple transformation, um, a simple translation, sorry. Or we're just moving to the right as it looks like one, two, three, about four spaces over to the right is what that looks like. Um, again, we're just taking it and sliding over there from A to B, okay? So there's lots of ways to describe that there. Now for this part here, how do we get from there down to over there? Well, that's a different question now, isn't it? Because now things are changing, right? This was easy to say, we're just sliding across over there. From over here though, it's not quite as simple. It's not quite a slide, is it? But there are a couple ways to think about what could be happening here. And it could be something like a reflection line. So let's take, for example, when I look at this shape, when I take this shape here, if I was to spin it like so, Okay, right? If I spin it like this, I can get it to the point where it looks like I have two kind of parts there and I have a reflection line right about there. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but I could find out by taking my patty paper, drawing a copy of B, and then just trying it out. If I flip that over on the line as such, do I end up landing there? I pretty much do. Now again, it's not perfect, but I'm pretty close to being a reflected image across that line of reflection. So I could say that there's a reflection line across this, right? So I reflected over there. There might've been other ways. You could have said, well, let's rotate it and then let's translate it and let's bring it down and then let's reflect it. 
there's a variety of ways you can move a shape from one position to another. And that's kind of the cool thing about doing these transformations. But in summary, what your lesson today was basically saying is that a move or a combination of moves is called a transformation. And when you do one or more of those, we often refer to that as a sequence of transformations. When you do make those transformations, it's important to remember that you're going to change your symbols for those letters. So instead of calling a point A, it becomes A prime or B prime. And that's just ways of noting that this is not the same original, it's a copy of A. And we call that copy A prime. Now if you were to make a copy of a copy, you would call that A double prime, right? Um, so we end up with lots of different ways of doing that. But for now, we're just doing with the prime stuff there to make that work. So we did some examples. Again, the translation is moving from the shape that stays the same, same rotation, same position. It's just sliding. A rotation takes a point when you take that point, it rotates it around and it makes a new angle there. And so you can use your protractor to find that angle. And that reflection takes a line and essentially we flip it over that line and you get the mirror image there in that regard. So on your homework today, you were taking a look at making moves here. And so you were given or you are given some shapes that look like such A, B, C, D. And over here we have E, F, G, and H. So we have shape P and shape Q. And what it asks you, first of all, for on number 1A, is it wants you to describe what's taking place there. How are we getting from one place to the next? How is this shape moving over to here, right? How's it taking place to get from P to Q? Well, that becomes a kind of a question of, well, what do you see happening? What do you, what do you visually see happening first on your own? And we each see things differently, so it depends on what you see first. When I look at this shape, I recognize that, and I'm just gonna take a copy of it here. I recognize that to get it from this position to that position, I'm gonna have to turn it. So I'm first of all gonna have to rotate this thing at least the 60 degrees to get it going the same direction as the other one. So if I rotate it 60 degrees, it gets me to here, right? So now at least I'm looking the same direction as that one. Now from there, after a rotation of 60 degrees, I notice I'm gonna have to go over, so I could say a rotate 60, and I might go over one, two, three, four. I'm gonna translate four to the right, which gets me one, two, three, four, I'm not there yet. And then I need to translate one up. And it gets me in the spot I need to be. Now, is that the only answer? Nope, it's just one answer that it helps me get to where I need to be. So for me, I, what I saw is I thought, well, let's rotate around point A 60 degrees. So we get there. I translated it to the right four, and then I went up one until I got the match there. So use some patty paper and see what does it take to get there, all right? Again, there's lots of different solutions for these problems. For the next one B, I had this shape, a little different looking shape here, here, and then we end up with a shape over here, looking like such. And the first thing I notice when I look at these shapes is that when I trace this, if I say, all right, let me get a copy of this one here. When I trace that shape, no matter how many times I move it, when I move that shape, I'm not going to be able to line up there. It's not going to match. That means there's probably going to be a reflection at some point in order to get that to line up. So I know I have to have a reflection at some point. When that's going to be, I'm not quite sure but I'm gonna have a reflection in order to get that shape to match the other one. So perhaps the first thing I wanna do is maybe I do that. Maybe I say, you know what, let me make a reflection over this line. So I say, here's a line and I'm gonna reflect the shape over here. So if I reflect the shape over here, I end up putting it about here. And so let me just draw it real quick. It would look like something like this. It'd be here and here and go down to and then up here. So I could reflect the shape there. So there's the reflection. I'll shade that in so you can see my reflection shape. 
That's step one. So step one, I'm going to reflect it over AE to make it like that. Now from that point, at least I'm going the right direction. Okay, I could then decide, well, let's translate it to here maybe. I could do that, I could slide it. And if I slide it there, then I can rotate it and I'm getting closer each time. Okay, so there's lots of things from here. I could take it from this point and I could translate point B prime, because that's what that one is now, to J. I could translate from B prime to J, which would mean sliding it from here to here. At that point, I'm looking pretty good. I could then take my shape and I could rotate how many? Let's see, 60 degrees? Yep. And do a 60 degree rotation around point J. So I could do a 60 degree clockwise rotation around uh, center J. And that gets me rotating this way here so that everything lines up. Okay? So just an idea, this is one way of doing it. I could take it, I could reflect it. Once I get it reflected over here, I can translate from B prime to J. So I'm moving this whole thing, B prime to this point. And then I take that image and I rotate it 60 degrees until I get to line up there. That's just one way, there are multiple ways you could do that. Just giving you an example of what could work to get you from one place to the next. When I look at the next one, letter C, we have a triangle that is from here to here. There are no grid lines this time, so it's a little bit tricky. All right, at least, you know, you might think it's tricky. Maybe you're getting it, you're good, which is awesome. So I have A, B, and C, like so. And so there's A, there's B, there's C. And what I might want to do, first of all, is I can just do a, an easy translate. I take A, and I'm going to move A all the way over to E. And let's just go over there and move the whole thing over to E. That's looking pretty good, isn't it? Okay, so now I have A and E, and I've moved it over, and now I'm in a good spot there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this real quick because it's not quite dark enough for you. So I move it so that A is on top of E, and we're looking good. Now you might notice that could be reflected. I don't have a line there. If I wanted to draw a line, I could draw a line of reflection here, and you notice it looks like a reflection, almost like butterfly wings or something. But if I don't see that, perhaps what I want to do is just simply rotate this thing. And I could rotate it so that this line here, AB, lands on top of AF, right? So I could rotate it. So if I put a pencil here and rotate this to this, I could put it right there. And now once I'm here, again, I have a line of reflection right there on that line. And I flip it over and we land on top. So different ways to approach that. Up to you, what do you see first? Maybe you want to translate and go from B and translate B onto point F and you slide it right there. Now you have a line of reflection right here and you flip it over from there to there. That's a simple way to do it as well. So a couple different options there, but what do you visually see? You have to make it work for you. Okay, number two, here's a quadrilateral and we have A, B, C, D as such. And we have a line of reflection right here. And it says draw the image of quadrilateral A, B, C, D after reflecting it across line L. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our shape. We're gonna draw a copy of it on our patty paper. And then we're gonna draw a line of reflection. Take this line here, I'm gonna draw it. I'm going to fold my paper right there on the line. And once I have that in place, then I can lift it up and make a little dot about where it's going to be, about where it's going to be, about where it's going to be, and about where it's going to be. Definitely not perfect, but it gets me pretty close. And I get the idea that, okay, I know what a reflection is reflecting across that line. Okay. All right, and finally, number three, we have this shape here. And it says to draw the image of quadrilateral ABCD after each rotation using B as a center. So we're gonna use this as our center point. And it first says to draw, make it go 90 degrees clockwise. Again, that idea of 90 degrees means if I took my protractor 
and I have a line here at 90, here's my 90 degrees, I'm gonna make the baseline, or in this case, the top line, I wanna move this AB part, because I'm gonna go clockwise, I wanna move this line to this position so that it is 90 degrees. That's my goal, is to make a 90 degree angle for that first move. So if I take this shape and draw my copy and hold my pencil down on B and rotate it to that 90 degrees, I can then see where that image should be at. In this case, my image would be right there and I would draw that line, draw that shape right there, okay? So I could draw it by again, putting my pencil down, my dots and my dot and my dot. And I could draw that and say there is my 90 degree rotation. So that's gonna be A, what A would look like, the 90 degree rotation. For B, B says to make 120 degrees clockwise, clockwise rotation. Well, 120 is a little bit more than 90. <laughs> so there's my 90, so same line, and 120 is out here. So I draw a new line. Okay, here's my 120. Draw my line there. Let's use a different color for this one. Let's go ahead and use, we'll use our little green one here. So now what I'm saying is I wanna take this same line and I'm gonna rotate my shape until it lands on this line right there because that distance is gonna be 120 degrees. So we take our shape, come back to my little original shape here. And I put my pencil on the B and I'm gonna rotate around until the base lands right there. And once it does, I can plot my points here here and here and I can draw that shape right there and there's my 120 degree it's going to be here in this spot okay so if I make it a little darker there that's my 120 degree shape right there following so far one more to go we're going to do 30 degrees counterclockwise so that means we're here but I need to move this around because if that's my baseline there, let's let's find a different spot to do this one. I want to go 30 degrees, so I'm going to go to flip my protractor around. And there I'm at zero. And what I want to do is I'm going to find my 30, which is here. And draw a new little line. Because now we're going to go this direction, aren't we? So because we're going this direction, I want, means I'm going to take my line, the same baseline, and I'm gonna move it here so I get to 30 degrees. That's my goal. I'm gonna go here to here. 30 degrees is the idea. So to do that, I take my original shape, hold my pencil down on B, and I rotate it to the 30 degree point. And now that I have that, I can make my marks, make my marks, make my marks, and then play connect the dots with my new shape that's rotated 30 degrees counterclockwise. All right, hopefully that helps you out a little bit today and you get the idea of what you're supposed to be doing. Um, again, just some samples here. There are lots of ways to do these problems, lots of ways to approach them. And so if you see it differently, then that's great. Nothing wrong with that at all. Seeing it differently is good. It's good to have a visual image of what that could look like. And it's up to you to kind of make it work and make it make sense to you. So great job today and good luck in class.